Since this snow hair is furry, I'm gonna shingle from the bottom up because I'm gonna I'm gonna lay on wool and then I want each let me find a good color to, I want each layer of wool to shingle over the last. So because I'm gonna use a technique where it's am I hitting the camera, sorry. Where it's um, sticking off a little bit. Um, these are all little folds of wool. So even though it gets smoothed down, there these are unfelted edges. If it were a smooth, shiny, you know, animal that we were trying to depict, I might not use this. Um, this folding technique. I would use more of a direct, um, you know, really looking at the image and putting colors and contrasts directly where they need to be, either by pulling the wool into the right size or cutting it. But this is a fuzzy animal, so this is the way we're gonna do it. In this bottom corner, I want some dark. I want some of my dark bunny color. And I also wanna go ahead and lay that in where we have um, strong shadowing on the back of the head and where the cheeks make a little shadow on the um, on the body of the bunny. So down here I'm going to start by using this folding technique and this is this is actually the way we do um, sometimes pelts and I think I first showed it in the chicks where you let the bottom third well since we're just starting here I can felt it down but mainly you felt the center one-third of your fiber so this would be the bottom third the center third and the top third so you've thoroughly felt the center third and then I fold this over and working on a fuzzy animal like this whether it's like a long-haired dog or whatever you're making what it allows you to do is have all these fringy edges that blend and it also allows you to apply hair similar to the way that it would be um, in the dog do another one right here the blue raspberry and the chestnut come together to make this really warm um, I, don't know, I really love this gray color it kind of in interprets as gray but the snow hares do have a lot of chestnut in them at certain times of the year as they're changing because they're brown in the summer. So depending on when you catch them, they do have this brown color in them. Okay, and I wanna put that in a few other places. This time I'm gonna use, I'm gonna fold it to control it a little bit and I'm gonna put it here under the, where the head, I'm putting it on the body side of the line, but where the cheeks of the rabbit would be creating a shadow on the body. So I just want it to be down under there so that when I put some lights on top of it, it's recessed like a shadow, shadowy area would be. And then I want to put a little bit at the back of the head. And I think I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to fold it into shape. Let's see, I wonder if we could roll it on the tool. Yeah, sometimes wrapping the tool can really help you create shapes. Just putting that right up to the line 
of the back of the head. If you're doing this project um, with any of the tutorials, really, if you have the patience, I'm not one of the people who might uh, not, I, I might not have the patience. <laughs> But um, watching the whole thing through before you do it is a great idea because you can see where I'm headed because um, sometimes the way I work doesn't necessarily make sense until you get there. So Okay, and now I'm going to keep building up from the bottom and I'm going to switch from this, this, the dark puddle to the medium and this is where I'm going to show you how this idea of um, the feathered ends blending in why it works so well I'll just take those layers and just just go right over that dark that we put in felt the center one-third Get the punch tool. And then fold the top third over. I got a little foot into this guy. I got a little foot there. I don't know. I feel like it was a little bit forced. I think I won't go for that in this one. I think I'll just make this a little darker. We'll see. We can change it at the end. If I, I felt like it was forced in the sense that his foot might not be quite that high. His foot's probably more down here. So I was trying to shove it into the composition. And then I just fold those tips over. He's got a shadow on his back from his ears. I'm gonna use this for that as well. I'm kind of picking a darker section of it. What you thinking there, Milo? You're very quiet. I was thinking maybe the rabbit is standing on a rock, and that's why his foot is up. Could be. Or a tree branch. I'm putting this up here while I have it out. I'm not going to felt it down so much. I'm going to leave it I don't know how I'm going to meet that just yet and what I want it to do. Alright, let me do one bit of shade here. I'm going to just shadow the curve of the chest a little bit. You can sort of see that on your on reference the, picture. Can you see the reference picture? In Not the, right now. Okay. okay. Um, in the reference picture He's got a little shadowing here. Um, what, what's a really neat thing to try to capture is reflected light. So sometimes, and it makes something really look round. So sometimes it actually gets lighter um, towards the edge of the object because there's a little light bouncing off of something onto it. So I'm gonna put this shadow, this um, medium color just inside of the edge of the chest because I might put, well, let's just do it this way. Let's just get our light. This is our reflected light. So I'm not using the whitest white. I'm using the light color that we mixed. And I'm gonna put it sticking off the edge of the chest here. And I'm gonna let it it's really sticking off. It goes well past my line, but that's okay. I can cut it or I can tweak it. I keep moving. 
I was thinking that too, but I did not want to be <laughs> like you're working. So yeah. So I might let his chest stay real furry like that, or I might um, tone it back a little bit. But at least getting this on here gives us our reflected light. So now I can put this. And what happens is we get to where we need to be more controlled, we can cut the fiber. So we're not dealing with as much. So like, let's say I cut this in half and then I restack it. And I usually try to put some pointy ends towards the cut ends to try and eliminate that real cut end look. So if you need more control, you can work with shorter fiber because it can be hard to to get the full staple length of fiber to fit into the place that you want it to be, you know? Okay, so the picture probably looks a little sad right at this point, which is what happens when I'm painting too and I have all my darks on and none of my lights yet. This is my um, light that we mixed. I'm gonna put that here. So I have kind of a dark and then a medium and now I'm gonna put a light. really gonna want a punch tool if they're doing this. Oh yeah, it's such a time saver. I'm gonna do the same back here. Just covering some ground now. It's a time consuming process. I think um, it's exciting, but it is by no means fast. All right, I might do one more of this blend where just off to the edge here, because if I put bright white there, I'm creating a lot of contrast there and I want the main contrast to be on the face. So I just use the pen tool to get it tacked on and then the punch tool to okay now I want to get into some white so now I'm going to use my pure white snow hair would be great for this this is the white top coat it's in your kit. Snow hair has just a little bit more kind of fine fibers and softness. Um, little top shelf fiber. This works just fine, but if you have some on hand and want to be fancy. All right, so we're starting to by using con different values, we're starting to create the illusion that the bunny is around. That's what painting is all about. So tricky. It is tricky, it is tricky. There's a lot to learn here. This is like, you know, practice and seeing, learning to see. Um, lots of little tools that you can use when you're drawing, you know, whether it's a rabbit or a dog or um, the proportions, you know, breaking the, the canvas down into halves and thirds is helpful. Um, looking at things relative to horizontal and vertical is really helpful. The back of this bunny just happens to make a 90 degree angle, um, but his forehead is not quite horizontal, it tilts down a little bit, and then it, it's a stronger angle here, 
So it comes out and then stronger angle. Um, this is maybe a 45. But there's just, there's a lot of ways to teach yourself to see what's happening. It's starting to look pretty with the white, isn't it? Yes. I thought it looked pretty good when you had the chestnut on with the, you know, two pebbles. <laughs> It's like, oh, that's almost a rabbit. So what I'm thinking about with the white um, is what is the sunlight hitting the most? So in this picture, our sunlight is coming from the upper left. So it's going to be hitting here the most. It's going to be hitting here. This is a this is a little shadowing between the head and the body. I think I'll throw a little bit of our light and maybe even mix it with some medium. Yes, you can do that. You now you're get getting... a fourth value and put it in here just to break up the pure white a little bit. I don't know what that is. It's a shadow for some reason. I don't know yet. I'm going to take a little bit of this medium. And blend those two colors together a little bit. Hopefully it's not, you know, a dog shadow interested in the pretty bunny. Yeah. <laughs> it's a looming predator. And to be nice and white up under the chin here. when you the folds work really well um, in terms of blending this way but then you have to figure out how to deal with the tops of your folds everywhere I'm gonna mix white with our white mix just to get a little bit more of a softer tone it's really incredible how wool, I mean, mixes just like paint. So I'm making this one not totally bright white. Really, there's not too much in the world that is super bright white. I mean, this these snow hairs are really light. And um, when the sunlight hits them, I guess that would be a case for very white. I lifted that shadow up and I'm kind of tucking this underneath it. I'm just going to see what happens here. That kind of hid the, the folds. Okay, that's good for now. I'm going to move on to, um, let's get these ears situated. All right, they have a black outline. The, the back of the ear has black, so I'm going to go ahead and use my black, make a little roll, and draw a line to delineate the back of this um, front ear, the back edge of it, I should say. Single needle helps when you get into the detail. Okay. And then I'm also gonna draw the top edge of the ear with this black. Am I too far off or am I still on? You're fine. Okay. I've been moving a little. Okay. 
Just really sharpen that up. And then meeting from this black deep center of the ear to the back here, we have some gray. I'm trying to remember how I did it. Here's my dark, it kind of starts to get hid down in there. But I have some mid-tones here. So I think I'll use the dark that we mixed along with some of the almond. Just to gray it out a little bit. Now the almond's a real long staple, so I'm gonna cut it. kind of good to get a color like this in other spots of the picture so that it's not so that it um, the whole picture relates together so it's not just here or you know use it um, where you can I might even get some into the background here all right so I'm gonna take a piece of that and fold it and let it come towards this black edge I, that has a very distinguished edge. So I'm not gonna let it stay fringy. I'm gonna actually, this part is a little bit more like um, painting in that we're not letting the fur do the work for us. We're trying to create the look of the ear by putting different colors of wool where it needs to be. I'm going to use that also at the bottom edge of the back ear. So if I let it, if I let the pointy tips go up, then it'll blend into that black a little bit. So I want to maintain my black line between the two ears. It's tricky. Tiny bit more. I don't know. I want this to blend a little bit. So I'm mixing almond and natural black. And I just want to take a tiny little bit. You're going to have all kinds of little piles of wool everywhere. And let those two colors blend together. And then a little bit lighter yet in here. So I'm gonna use the medium. And just, I'm actually gonna fold it to control it. ear has a really nice white um, highlight. So I'm going to take my white and roll it into a thin line. And then it comes around here as well. 
And this, this is going to set our front ear apart from the back ear. We're going to leave the back ear kind of in shadow and not really well defined. And let the front ear get all the detail. And then the really fun part is putting the white fluff along the front. So taking my white top coat, I'm restacking to try and get the staple as short as possible. And I'm going to set it down. Mm, let me put a little bit of my light. Where's my light pile? Did I use it all? Oh, it fell on the floor. Tiny bit of my light in there, so it's not quite so stark. I'm trying to decide whether to cut it or not. I think I'll felt it on and then if I need to cut it rather than trying to work with a teeny little short piece. Maybe you can't see what I'm doing. I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> so I have no unfair advantage here. I'm stabbing the center so that it's well felted so that I can fold this over. You made the center the front of the ear, right? I made the center of this piece of roving at the front of the ear. Is that what yes. you meant? Yeah. So you went along the line that would be the front of the ear. Yes. Yes, that chestnut line that we made in the beginning. Now, this is a bit much rabbit ear fluff. The tricky thing is not you got to move drag your scissors so that you don't get kind of going up and down with them so that you don't get too strong of a blunt edge blunt yes thank you i was simultaneously thinking about the amount of wool that i have here <laughs> is quite a lot what are you laughing about <laughs> So it just depends on, you know, how 3D do you want it to be? If you want it to be more two-dimensional, then you're going to thin this out even a little bit more. You can kind of come vertically at it and some will come out. I just used a lot of wool. So. And it could do with more felting as well. Now they have a nice little poof back here too. I'm going to do that with the light. This time I think I will cut it. I think it was just too, too much. They have a good little bit of ear poof. That's part of what makes a bunny so fun. Mm -hmm. The poofiness. Yes, and the big ears. So, you will stab a lot. Tweak. I like to put all my cut stuff in one pile so that I know that's what that is and I probably won't reuse it. I save anything that's still full length staple. That's a pretty decent ear. Good earage. <laughs> <laughs>